This screencast covers the material from Module 6, Lesson 15, where we construct parallel line segments and analyze the relationships of the coordinate pairs. We're going to be applying some of the things that we learned in the previous lesson, Lesson 13, where we kind of used uh, right triangles to help us analyze patterns. Okay, we have a series of things to do with this coordinate plane. Let's start with the first two tasks. It says, identify the locations of P and R, points P and R, simple enough. We first go along the x-axis, because that's the first of our ordered pairs, and we see that P aligns with 6 on the x-axis. Now we look at the y-axis and it aligns here. Well, these aren't labeled, but we can easily discern that this is 3, 4, 5, 6, so my y-coordinate is 4. Moving on to R. R, moving along the x-axis, corresponds with 11, so we'll label the first of the ordered pairs as 11. And if we look at the y-axis here, we see that we align with the 6. So our ordered pair is 11, 6. So we have 6, 4 for P and 11, 6. Now we need to draw PR using our straight edge. Okay, we now have our line PR. We should put a couple of arrows on there because they ask us to have a line that's indicated by the uh, line with the two arrowheads over the uh, pair ER, or PR rather. Now on to the next step. Now we continue with some additional tasks. It says plot the following coordinate pairs on the plane. We have S at 6, 7. Well, we know 6, and then we'll go up the x-axis, or the, uh, the, go up above the 6 on the x-axis, and we'll go until we intersect the 7, and we see that we have a point here. We'll label that S. And we have to find 11, 9. We'll find 11. We'll go up to 9, and we'll label that T. Notice that uh, P and S and T, R and T are on the same coordinate as far as the X goes, which makes our job a little bit easier. So let's now draw our line. We'll finish up this task by putting the arrows on both ends. And now we are asked the relationship between those two. So circle the relationship between PR and ST. Now these symbols here might not be familiar to you. Uh, when we see this symbol here, it, it represents perpendicular. It's pretty easy to tell because we have basically an upside down T where the vertical segment and the horizontal segment meet at a right angle. This pair of parallel lines represents parallel. And so it's not that complicated. So again, this is perpendicular. This is parallel. Try to get you used to some of the notation you'll see in, in future grades. Well, we see that, of course, that these two are parallel. Let's continue. Finally, we're asked to give the coordinates of a pair of points, U and V, such that UV, line UV, is parallel to line PR. Well, let's uh, review what we did in the previous problem. Remember, we just took the uh, x value for r, we kept it the same, and we just added 3 to the y value, and we had to do the same to the other in our corresponding uh, line here. So again, we keep the same x coordinate for s, and we move it up the same amount. So we move this 3, and we move this 3 up. So let's make another pair. We have many choices here, and there's more than one answer. But I'm just, I'm going to make a line underneath, and I'm going to go down to here. So below P, keeping the X coordinate the same, and changing the Y coordinate by subtracting 2. So I went from 4 to 2 on the Y coordinate. So I'll uh, plot that point and label U. We'll again do the same thing. We will move, uh, keeping the X coordinate the same, move down the 2 just like we did here, and plot my next point, and we'll label that V. And we can take our straight edge 
and complete this task. We now have the line created by our straight edge, and again to complete the task, we're going to put in the arrows. I didn't plot the points here, so let's take care of that. I, I kind of got ahead. I finished G before finishing F. So what are my coordinates for you? Well, again, I have the same X coordinate, 6. But my Y coordinate, I took away 2 from the 4, so I got 6, 2. And I have to do the same thing with V. So again, I have the same X coordinate, 11. And now I'm going to take that 6, subtract 2, and now I have a 4, 11, 4. Okay, let's go and do another set of problems. Uh, working with another coordinate plane right now, we have some different tasks. We have uh, plotted on this points E and F. I want to point out the intervals in this case. When I go from 0 to 1, there's one uh, of these uh, hatch marks or tick marks in between. Well, that means that each one of these is 1 half. So I have 0, 1 half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3. Three and a half, four, four and a half, and we can do the same thing along the x-axis as well. So let's locate points E and F. I have my point E. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. I'm going to start on my E, and I'm going to uh, trace down to my x-axis, and I see that I have a one. And I'm going to do the same thing this time. I'm going to start my E and go horizontally over to my y-axis. I see in between three and four. That would be three and one half. Let's do the same thing with F. Start with F, go straight down a vertical line to my X axis, and I see that I have one and one half, or excuse me, three. And I'm going to go on to uh, do the same, going from F to my Y axis with a horizontal line. I see that I have now the one and a half. Now we need to draw the line using our straight edge. Now that we have created our line, we will add the arrows at the end to designate this as a line as opposed to a line segment. Let's continue with our next task associated with problem two. Now we need to generate coordinate pairs for L and M such that E F, which is the line we have, is parallel to L and M. We'll use the same strategy here, and I'm going to explain that, and that's going to give us the answer to E. So what do we do? with the previous uh, set of, uh, the previous coordinate plane, is we kept the value for x the same, but we changed the value of y. And whatever change in the value of y we do for, say, f, we have to do for e, or vice versa. So I'm going to start by just filling in my uh, values here. Uh, for x, I'm going to start with e equals into the 1, so I'm going to put a 1 here, and I'm going to put a 3 like I have for the F there, so that will keep us straight. We can draw a line under, we could draw, draw, uh, draw a line over. If I want to go over, I would add to the Y value of E and F, okay, uh, I could write those over here, so I can't, let's refer to, let's have something to refer to here, so I have E is one, three and a half, and F is three, one and a half. So I'm going to take these values for my Y, and I can either add or I can subtract. I'm going to subtract this time. So I'm going to subtract one from three and a half. So my coordinate here will be one, and uh, like here. And 1 minus 3 and a half is 2 and 1 half. And I look at my F, and I see that we have um, 1 and a half. I'm going to subtract 1 from that as well, so this will have to be half. Let's plot the points. I have 1, 2 and a half. I'm going to label that L. And I have 3, 1 half. And I'll label that M. Now we just need to put in our line. Okay, we need to complete this. And we just simply need to draw our arrow points there. Uh, and again, I, I explained the procedure for doing that. 
So uh, you can just simply use the words that I spoke and uh, use something similar to that in your own words for uh, answering E. Our final task, uh, give the coordinates of a point G such that EF is parallel to GH. So let's look at G. I have one and a half and I have four. So I go one and a half. And I go up to four. Okay, now we've changed the coordinates a little bit. But I see that in general, even though I haven't kept the x coordinate the same, I know that I've changed the y. And the y has gone up by two points from this corresponding part, part here, or one point from this and over one. So I can kind of look at this as up one and over one. I could say up two from this point right here. So let's look at F. I'm going to go up one and over one. I'm going to plot that point. And I should be putting my labeling these. So this is G and this is H. And let's get the straight edge out and see if they, we have the same uh, or parallel lines here. So indeed we do have parallel lines here. I'll draw in those little arrows to finish the task. And I need to plot that value for H. So my order pair for H is three and a half. And my Y is two, so three and a half, two. How did I do it? Well again, I could explain that I went I for the same X, I went up two points or two intervals. Again, I did that for here. So given the same x I went up to. We also could use the explanation that uh, we looked at our e to get to the g. We had to go up one and across. Up one and across. Kind of using those ideas of those triangles to help us uh, do this. Either way is fine. Whatever works for you. Both are valid explanations.